Okay, okay so we had this idea of um, basically robotic swarms. Uh, I'm doing um, research into how we can uh, control robotic swarms to do foraging for us or uh, building. And um, so the idea for the story was uh, what will happen with the society when the technology becomes available uh, and when you will have these sort of insect-like robots just flying around, let's say taking pictures of you, following you to a shop, spying on you, uh, sharing the information with corporations and with the government, is there going to be any privacy? And then uh, Robin also came up with this idea of what if you can also have nanorobots um, sort of injected into your body to alter your mood or to help you with illnesses and um, how is that going to affect the relationships? Um, so, yeah, do you want to maybe? Uh, we had, I mean, I was very keen, and I think I'm the only one who'd finished a, <laughs> finished a draft before we even started. Because that's the kind of person some of us are. Um, I, I, um, so, we, we, we've had a really fascinating conversation. We've covered Buddhism and Islam and Middle Eastern architecture and its relation to political context and all kinds of things. Um, it all, was relevant. Um, we were. I, I found one of the most interesting, or the most interesting thing that I discovered was the different perspective. You know, we're coming at it from a scientific and an artistic different points of view um, to make a false distinction, but it does exist because, um, based on the word swarms, and as I said this morning, Tolstoy's use of the word swarms, I. I wanted to use this metaphor of insects all the way through, and I have my main character, who's not a nice bloke, um, thinks of human beings as insects, he thinks of these nanobots as swarms of insects, he even thinks of the, the stars as a, a swarm of insects, He's, he, he thinks of um, societies and states as swarms and so on. So I liked the ambiguity of that metaphor, I liked the way that it could kind of refer to lots of different things at once and that the the meanings could kind of play on each other and, 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 and so on. Whereas you didn't like the ambiguity at all. You you thought no we, we have to, we have to determine we have to determine our terms. What do we mean by insect? Let's have an equation to define it properly. So there was a, I, so that was really good. I think we could we both learned stuff from each other about that. Um, the two things that we were look that I was looking into the uses were surveillance, the idea of having little, um, they would actually look like they could be disguised as flies, a, um, a flying mechanism, a machine, which could deliver a, ma a nanobot, so it could hang around in a crowd of people and deliver a nanobot into somebody's ear or up somebody's nostril, and then that nanobot could change the mood of people in the crowd, it could kill people in the crowd, it could kill them at once or later. And the other um, thing that I was looking at as well as surveillance was the medical, well it connects doesn't it, the medical use or abuse, how could somebody try and control somebody else in a private relationship by injecting them with these things which would then go to work on their brain chemicals and uh, their sexual hormones and other, and other things. Um, so. I'll read the messiest bit because is the best one. Is, I, I don't know if it's, the, it's certainly not the best bit at the moment and I'll probably just confuse myself and stumble because it looks like that at the moment. But I'll read that because that's the bit that we spent most time having arguments about. Um, so here's this, he's a secret policeman and it is about the present really. For years we've had the basic nanobot technology to administer health or illness according to our orders. Mechanical means of delivery also existed, but in the beginning they lacked effectiveness until our allies perfected miniaturization, um, equipping the delivery machines with sufficient hardware to act intelligently. We used the first clumsy, painfully visible models to neutralize a space, that is, to eliminate those gathered like drones but slightly more discreet. But there are some things you don't want done discreetly, you want to make a point. And this made use of the first swarms quite pointless. They did nothing that couldn't have been done more cheaply and effectively the old way with machine guns. We used them too for general surveillance but we'd always done that traditionally with eyes in the crowd. 
We used the robots for modernity's sake and to please our allies. But they grew more and more perceptive, learning to distinguish a subject's skin tone, the symbols he bore, the significance of his clothing. Still, they were a clumsy tool until the technology was developed so that the robots were small enough to be disguised as flies, but also large enough to be able to fly without being set off course by wind or other unpredictable factors. The carrier flies found their target and delivered their deadly nanobot load. Then, what had been a hammer became a scalpel. Now, by some miracle of algorithmic perfection, our insects are able to pick an individual out from a crowd, unerringly, in a mosque, on a street corner, in a marketplace. They can kill soundlessly without spilling a drop of blood. If the crowd is dense enough, nobody even notices the death, and they don't have to kill immediately. They don't have to kill immediately. A dose of death can be administered through a nostril, into an ear, through an air vent into the lungs to slowly, persistently work its way towards the center. The victim dies later in his bare lodging, or in the cafe drinking tea, or with his children in the park. Then we can set the insects off, obviating the need for legwork to follow the forensic traces of those our victim has been breathed upon or touched on, and claim insect penetration to mitigate their bloody glories. Okay, the terrorists didn't get hold of the siren supplies, but they got hold of my tongue when it gave the order because they'd shot me full of their insects. Should their pleas bear weight? When swarms are located within their anatomies, then certainly yes, but the media squabbles over it, and the definitive story is told by the loudest voice as ever. But in terms of raw truth, away from the chattering mandibles of the history writers, we are left with what is either a problem or an opportunity, depending on where you stand, <coughs> namely an infinite refraction of responsibility. Mm -hmm.